So um, I want to talk about a subject I feel very strongly about. This is a video I've been intending to make for some time, but I um, haven't got around to it. I want to talk about um, the crime situation in this country. Now, I, I've always felt that uh, we can't see a rise in crime based solely on press headlines. So that in itself is an indication of a rise in crime. But I think it is irrefutable that violent crime has risen in this country in recent years. And um, the statistics would seem to indicate that. Now, I'm not going to get into the statistics that can be, um, because I don't have them at hand. Um, rather, I just want to talk, I guess, from a human side of this. And... Um, how I feel about it, like like many normal thinking people, I am I'm concerned about it. I'm angry about it, and um, I find it quite alarming. Um, clearly, there's no easy answer in terms of either the solution or the causes, but I think certainly some things would. Well, before I get into the that, um, let me just cite a few examples of some of the crime that's been happening recently, and some of these are well documented. A 100-year-old woman, a Holocaust survivor, died after being mugged in Derby. I believe she was a victim of a robbery. 100 years old. Holocaust survivor. A young man in Stratford-upon-Avon was chased by a gang and uh, he drowned. His body was found several days later in the canal there, I believe. Um, and it's thought that uh, these opportunists are um, targeting young people when they've had a few drinks and they're um, in obviously a more vulnerable position. Um, and I've just read a report that uh, the Home Secretary, Sajid Javid, said that um, not long ago, shortly before getting the post, he was a victim of a moped mugging um, outside Euston Station. Um, the moped came up and took his phone, and he was left uh, angry and upset. And the comedian Michael McIntyre, similar thing happened. Um, but, you know, I could cite a long, long list of incidents that we've come across recently. Um, last year, of course, there was a spate of acid attacks in the capital, which was extremely disturbing. And the, the this new method of, um, I shouldn't say new, but let's say it's been more used recently, of people um, attacking others on a moped, a, a young woman, there was footage of a young woman being attacked that way in London recently, and um, there was a couple, um, you know, their tyres were slashed and uh, guys held up their vehicle. There really does seem to be a rise in just mindless, thuggish sort of crime, just totally desensitised crime and it's um it's very disturbing i'm not making an exact comparison here statistically speaking but it, it reminds me of the film uh, most violent year that's a film about uh, it's certain it's about this basically a uh, businessman who runs a haulage company set in the united states um i think it's new york city uh, in 1981 that year was the peak year for homicides in the united states and um, the film isn't actually excessively violent, but you definitely get a palpable sense of fear and the atmosphere of violence, the atmosphere of an impending, you know, what could happen at any minute. That's what Britain feels like a little bit at the moment. Now, obviously, in world terms, we rank far down the list. Britain still remains in international rankings a very safe country. If you look at homicide rates for this country, um, you know, we're far below um, many other countries. And certainly if you were to compare us to a country like Honduras or Venezuela or somewhere like that, you know, the, the contrast is very obvious. Um, we don't have a situation where you get, um, you know, basically almost like a war zone shootouts between paramilitary police and drug cartels and that sort of thing. So we're nowhere near that sort of level. And, you know, by God, I hope we never get there. I, I doubt that we will. But 
that doesn't mean there isn't a serious problem. Um, I mean, the car bottle right now is looking quite scary because it just seems to be mindless, vicious, cowardly sort of crimes. Um, in many cases, you get gangs attacking individuals. Um, I've always had strong views on crime, you know, um, from personal experience at the age of 16, me and my family were driven from a home by local jobs. Th these weren't like organized high level gangs. They were just local jobs. And um, that experience shaped my life in terms of how I look at crime. And that is, I believe in zero tolerance. I, I don't think that there should be any sympathy for people who do this to fellow citizens. I, I think it's, it's repugnant. I mean, anyone who would mug a 100 year old, especially to the point where it kills them, I, I think someone like that should spend the rest of their life behind bars, never be released, ever. In fact, I think for, for cases like that, it's a compelling argument to bring back the death penalty. My gut feeling is against that, but I could definitely see why some people would deserve it. You know, if we're talking about it purely in terms of right and wrong, um, there's some people who, whose crime is so heinous that you do think they don't deserve to live. Then that gets into the domain of playing God. What we can do, though, is um, as a society, at least have a consensus that this should not be tolerated. Now, the problem is law-abiding citizens are not going to take the law into their own hands because they know there's consequences for that. Um, you know, the, we can look at a lot of areas where why crime has risen in recent years, like that, say, last three or four years. Definitely, I think the decision by the then Home Secretary, Theresa May, to go against stop and search um, was a big mistake when she told the Police Federation that was... Um, problematic. Um, even Sadiq Khan has changed his position on that somewhat, you know, because Khan was going out of his way to kind of, um, frankly, I think, virtue signal. Here's how I feel about stop and search. I totally understand people being frustrated if they are innocent and they feel that they're being searched solely because of the colour of their skin. But statistically speaking, in London, the fact of the matter is the majority of um, both homicide victims and those guilty of these sort of crimes are young African American, let's go say African American, excuse me, young black British men. Now that's a fact. It's not racist, it's just a statement of fact. And so if the police have intelligence that's statistically, that's, you know, stopping people can result in a reduction in, in violent crime, then Frankly, that is far more important than, than being politically correct. I mean, Johnson adopted it as mayor, and the number of um, stabbing homicides in his tenure were, were less than what they are under Khan. So if it works, you know, you know, the biggest priority for any elected politician, especially if you're mayor of London or home secretary, is keeping the public safe. That goes above anything else. Now, I understand the argument about stop and search creates, you know, animosity between the police and segments of the community. I think the police have come a long way since the 80s. I think they are more diverse. I think they are more representative of the community. What I would say is if this works, it has to be done. They should do it in a civil way. You know, they shouldn't um, because there may be a chance that someone could be totally innocent. So the police should, you know, talk to them in a civil manner, etc. But in the end of the day, keeping the public safe is paramount. And as it stands, I mean, the situation in London, um, I'm not going to say it's the highest it's ever been in terms of homicides, but it's pretty bad. Um, it, of course, it was widely reported earlier in the year that London, for the first time ever, had more recorded homicides in New York City. There's some debate around exactly how you look at that, but Whatever way we look at it, there is um, this situation is bad. Now, stop and search is one factor. It would be naive to think that alone would fix everything. I think there's a lot of factors. In terms of root causes, well, again, you know, that's not such a simple thing because 
a lot of these vicious crimes are not happening just in inner city areas. You know, look at the young guy I mentioned, not the Stratford upon Avon. You know, um, that's a tourist town. It's a wealthy little town. Um, so it's not as simple as, you know, say, oh, it's just about poverty. I, I don't accept that. I, I think it's certainly a factor. But my issue with always bringing poverty into the equation, oh, it's because they're poor. Firstly, that smears poor people as being all prone to crime. Secondly, it mitigates responsibility for the, from the criminal because it, it sort of insinuates, oh, well, that's it's society's fault that you choose to mug someone. Um, definitely parenting is a factor. But again, it's not that simple because you get some parents who do get a balance and they still have... Um, they still have offspring who who have com- complete contempt for society. So one thing is obvious, nothing about this is black and white. However, I do think that um, one thing I find deeply, deeply frustrating is you can get a situation where police get someone, right? And they've got information from the public. They get someone. They've worked hard to get them. It goes through the system. And then you get a judge that gives them a tap on the wrist. That makes my blood boil. I think judges should be far more accountable in terms of their sentencing. Um, They're in a powerful position. I felt this for a very long time. It it makes my blood boil when you see a particularly serious crime result in a tap on the wrist. And what I mean by that is a sentence that just does not match the gravity of the crime. Anyone guilty of a violent crime should be behind bars. That should be an automatic custodial sentence. but also there's particular crimes that don't necessarily involve violence, but are equally reprehensible. I mean, if you get a pensioner that is robbed of the life savings, it may not necessarily involve violence, but that, I think most people would agree, is a disgusting crime. We as a society need to not tolerate criminals. We need to make these people feel that they are, because I feel they're complacent. I feel that's what's happened. They've got complacent. They think the police are overstretched, so they're not going to arrest us. And I think that is a big factor. You know, I've seen a lot of right-wingers blame Labour, um, but they also need to take some responsibility. The fact of the matter is, on the Tory watch, there has been police cuts. Now, more police on the streets doesn't necessarily mean that criminals are suddenly going to get scared. These are arrogant, ruthless people. But I think it can make some difference. More police... Um, mandatory custodial sentences for violent criminals Um, certainly the usage of knife arches things like that can be effective but I do I do believe zero tolerance is part of this if for no other reason and it sends out a message to complacent criminals that actually if you're apprehended you are going to face justice I mean the guy that um, the animal that killed that old woman should should rot behind bars Someone like that should never be released. You know, someone that could kill a stranger in that way, and it's particularly heinous that the stranger is so vulnerable, but to kill anyone in that way, um, you know, it's it's also awful if it was a strong young man that he killed, but it's particularly heinous when the victim is vulnerable. Um, and that's another factor, actually. Anyone can find themselves a victim of crime. That's why it's... You know, this isn't a case that only some people are targeted. I mean, for goodness sake, the Home Secretary uh, was targeted. The situation just seems... It's... It's scary. But I I really think these people... Personally, I would have them put in shackles. I think that the sort of vicious crimes that we're seeing, like when you get a gang targeting an individual, I think people like that are the scum of the earth. And... I'm going to keep my emotions in check here because it makes me have very strong views on this. But I do feel that we as a society, if one thing comes out of leaving the European Union, then maybe it should be that um, we're no longer bound by certain European legislation and treatment of offenders. Um, I say give them the due process, let them have the day in court um, within the prison system give them exercise, give them food, but that's it. I wouldn't be against, for example, introducing prison uniforms. I really think we need to change the culture in this country. And I believe it is a culture 
of acceptance, not from the public, not from the police. Although there's times I think the police can improve. I mean, sometimes you get a situation where the police give the impression that they're not bothered and they go after more minor. I mean, you get the impression, and I'm not generalising here because there are many brave officers who, you know, take risks every day. But sometimes you do get the impression if they've got a choice between, let's say, an old beggar who's being a bit of a nuisance versus a gang of thugs, they go for the old beggar. And that might be an unfair assessment, but I think the police need to be very empathetic to victims of crime because they deal with this every day. Victims of crime don't. Um, that's, you know, maybe going into another domain. But anyway, when all is said and done, as a society, we need to collectively show no tolerance to these people. Um, criminals need to feel fear. I want to see a situation where criminals live in fear that they're going to get a knock on the door or they're going to get um, a police squad coming in, dragging them out of their bed and bringing them before a court of law. I'm not advocating vigilanteism. Vigilanteism can result in innocent people being targeted. So I'm not advocating that. But public anger is growing. Public concern is growing. And this is understandable. The government really, really needs to get this in hand. Um, now Mr. Javid can personally empathise. He needs to really push this. I mean, these moped mugger, muggers, for example, they've got this card and they need to be told by a judge in a court of law, you are a card. I want to see criminal shame. It's not just good enough saying, uh, you know, going through all the formalities. I want to see criminals shamed. I want these people to pay for what they have done. That's not revenge, that's fairness. And quite frankly, if we get into a situation where one of these people are caught and the public does turn on them, frankly, it will be because of these weak judges who will not issue sentences that it, it makes my blood boil, to be honest. Because I think the police are under enormous pressure, right? Um, the public are feeling fear, they're feeling anger. These judges are in a position of power, and too often we see serious crimes not resulting in sentences that really merit that. Now, I appreciate every case is individual. There's different circumstances to every case. But, you know, when you get a situation, and I'll just introduce another point here. I'm sorry, I know there's a lot of um, different angles, but I think it is important to mention a lot of this. CCTV. To those who say, oh, CCTV is big, brother, it's an overbearing state. What if you were the victim of a serious crime and it was CCTV footage that caught the person who'd done that? Then you wouldn't be complaining about an overbearing police state. I do strongly believe in CCTV from that point of view. Um, but there has to be a situation where it can be utilised. I had my bike stolen two years ago and obviously that's not in the same sort of scale as some of the other crimes I've mentioned. But apparently there was CCTV nearby, but because it wasn't legally allowed this the it was actually on the pub and they weren't legally allowed to have it angling down the street now that's sort of the sort of bureaucratic nonsense that we need to get rid of had they been allowed to aim the the camera down the street then the person who took my bike would have been um on camera now they might have had a balaclava or something i don't know i'm not saying it definitely would have identified them but it might have helped um, so I am a strong believer that what works needs to be used. Civil liberties, of course, are extremely important. Um, I'm not downgrading that. But when violent crime is rising, there is nothing more important than protecting the public. And that means um, sending out the message to criminals that they, they're not going to be tolerated. I would have nothing against, quite frankly, certain radical measures publicly shaming these people. I'd have nothing against that. You know, the American system has many faults. I do believe far too many people are incarcerated, um, et cetera, et cetera. I can fault the American system in many ways. However, at local level, you get situations where judges come up with certain creative punishments. Um, I'm not saying it would necessarily work here, but some of that, we can scoff at it, but some of it is not necessarily a bad thing if it really makes the criminal think twice about ever doing it again. So, for example, you get a gang of thugs who attack an individual for no reason. Maybe they don't like the look of them. Maybe the person is from a different ethnic group. 
more of, you know, there are, has been a rise in racist attacks as well, which is particularly disturbing. I believe each and every single gang member should be personally shamed and told that they are a card. Because I believe only that will force them to change their ways. I staunchly believe that. Scared straight, so to speak. Um, we need to take radical measures. We need to get much, much harder on these people. Um, I think one problem is criminals have got complacent. Because they think they're going to get away with it. And sadly, in many cases, they will. Now, the police cannot be everywhere at once. The public need to work with the police. The police need to work with the public as well. Police need to take reports seriously. And I don't think they always do. They need to take reports seriously and they need to be understanding of the position the public are in. Um, so this comes with a collective effort. But as a society, we shouldn't tolerate it. Um, criminals need to be scared. I want to see a situation where they're living in fear because then the complacency goes down. Then they think, well, if I could be arrested, if I'm actually going to face consequences for this, maybe I'll think twice. As it stands, they're arrogant. They think they can do what they want with impunity. And I think a big part of the problem there is weak judges. So I think more pressure, peaceful pressure, should be put on judges to, to just get a grip and start issuing sentences that actually match the gravity of the crime. Because it, is, it must be so frustrating for police who have went, you know, worked really hard to apprehend these people. And then it goes to a court of law and... The judge gives them a tap on the wrist. That must be infuriating for the victims, also for the police. So I think judges need to be more accountable. Um, if that means more media pressure, so be it. I'm not talking about any sort of, you know, I'm not threatening judges or anything like that, but they, they're in a position of power. And I think a big part of the problem here is complacency. Uh, I'm going to round this up, just repeat myself, but... It's depressing, it's frustrating, and it can happen to any of us. That's what's scary about it. Now, I don't want to exaggerate the, you know, Britain is not is not Honduras. We're not anywhere near that sort of level. But there has been too many crimes recently that have just been vicious and just so desensitised in nature. Now, we've always had crimes like that. But the last few years, definitely the situation seems to have got worse. And I just think as a society, we need to not tolerate criminals. It, it sh I think too many people are like, they're blasé about it. They're like, oh, well, hopefully the person will be arrested. And we need to stop respecting criminals. These animals don't deserve respect. They are scum. They're scum. And that comes from a point of view of conviction. I take no pleasure from saying that, but it's my conviction. They don't deserve any human respect. Human rights, insofar as due process, give them food, give them exercise. That's it. Due process, present the evidence, you know, let them have their day in court. But when they are convicted, these judges need to get some backbone and actually issue a sentence that matters. I'm sick and tired of weak, useless judges that will not do their job. Frankly, infuriates me. And I'll leave it there.